The COVID Diaries. This is my story of my experience having COVID-19, which I am writing a daily diary about. Hopefully, it'll turn out to be light-hearted. As I write this, I'm literally on day one, so who knows what's to come with this bastard of a virus. Well today, I awoke to find myself feeling great. If by great, I mean a head full of snot and being tired as hell. My wife has had COVID twice now, and I have been around many people over the last two years who have had it too, and I never once had a sniffle, so naturally I thought, ha 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 I am invincible. I have spent all this time joking that I'm naturally immune to it, I say it jokingly, but after a while I started to believe maybe I am. That's not to say I didn't take the vaccine when it was available to me, and I am at this moment double jabbed, better safe than sorry. So last Wednesday, my wife tested positive for COVID for the second time, so not having had a sniff before, I carried on like normal. Staying close, kissing and cuddling, cause as we know, I think I'm immortal at this point, nope, not this time. The weekend goes by, and not even a sneeze. That was till Sunday night, when the floodgates of my ass opened. Just before bed, I had a rumbling in the bowels, the likes of which had not been felt since the last time I had the Vindapoos, which was a long time ago. After trying to go to sleep a couple of times, and running to and from the bathroom, I thought, maybe I better had do a test in the morning. Monday. Well morning is here, and wow, I don't feel too, oh wait what the hell is that? I suddenly remember the night sleep I had, which was possibly the worst in years, my head is full, breathing through my nose is pretty much impossible, and I remember the stomach cramps, anyway I get up and go downstairs as normal to put the kettle on and get ready for a good day's work, however. Upon raising to my feet I know something's defo up. So I put the kettle on as normal and start to set up the lateral flow test. Great! The bit we all love, removing the little stick of doom, the stick that gets rammed up both of the nostrils, like some mad coke head trying to stop an overdose. The stick that is the difference between going into work and earning a living, or staying home, feeling like shit. Bollocks. It's positive. I'm so tired. Shit. Wait. This means, no. I'm not immune. Oh my god, how can this happen? Obviously this is a mistake, I can't have it, I have done nothing to protect myself from it. Aside from getting the jabs I have been quite lackadaisy about the whole thing, and what's worse. I now have to go and tell my wife that after all this time saying ha 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 I won't get it, I'm immune, I can't get covid, I am invincible, I now have to admit it. I was so wrong, and now I will have to face that, shite. But first things first, I had to message my mate and tell him the bad news. Man down, I won't be in work. Bastard. I fit kitchens for a living on building sites, and as it's currently January, it's freezing, and I hate to leave my mate in the lurch, but what can I do? It's bullcrap. Monday afternoon. After a few hours back in bed with the wife, we got up, and feeling slightly worse, but at least somewhat refreshed from the extra sleep that was well needed, we headed downstairs to hit the paracetamol and coffee. Then, there was an idea formulating in my wife's mind. I had promised to watch the so-called movie, Tinkerbell and the Neverbeast, thing. Oh. No escape this time. Ha ha ha, it wasn't that bad actually. Luckily hunger hit me and I settled in with a couple of egg butties, a steak slice with cheese melted on top and prawn cocktail crisps and a cup of toast and jam-flavored tea. I think maybe some people will think it revolting, but oh how wrong you are. Try it I dare you, you will not regret the combo lol. My dad just phoned me to see how we are. He said something that we found quite funny, when we were talking about how hopefully it'll be not too bad over the next few days, he said, none of us know how this is going to turn out, we can only hope we get the mild case, simply put as, different cases for different faces. How very true this could turn out to be. But at the moment it just feels like the start of flu, and my bloody nose won't stop dripping. Okay. Enough already. 
The thought of having COVID now worries me, I quit smoking and drinking alcohol almost six months ago, for good, and I hope that decision will pay off. Now I dread to think how bad it can be if I was still puffing 20 a day and having the usual weekend hangovers. As I sit here writing this on the couch, I feel my neck aching more and more like it's moving out of my snot-filled head, and leaking further south I can only pray it stays out of my lungs. Anyway let's see what Tuesday brings. Tuesday. Well. What can I say? Tuesday is the day, where I wish I had got a better night's sleep and had stayed right there, in dreamland. It is very safe to say, I feel like shite. I woke up and was hit by an instant, smack in the face. Like 50% worse on the previous day. Why or why did I bother getting up today? Not that I had a choice, my head is still fucking full, of what seems like lead weights packed into me with a ton of shit. I decided to have a shower. What a mistake that was. I suddenly feel tired, and worse than a 1980s TV show's plot line. Like Airwolf. What the hell was that show all about? Fuck it. It's a PJ day. Something I never do, is staying in PJs. I always get dressed no matter what, so you can now understand how shite I actually feel. Even writing this diary has become something of a chore, and for God's sake it's only day two. OMG. I'm still defecating through the eye of a needle. That is all I'm going to say on that fecal matter ha ha ha. So once again, I decided that I'm too tired, so I'll go and sleep for an hour. Tuesday afternoon. After almost two hours, I ask myself why did I bother? The back of my neck has started hurting, my legs now ache, and the real strange thing is, taking a breath, is somewhat of an effort, which is weird, because, I have no tightening of my airways. My wife still feels like shit too, with an achy head and newly added grating, to an already bitch of a sore throat. She said, can you imagine how bad it would have been, without being jabbed? It's a good point, I would hate to have this without it. All those people who say the vaccine is not worth it, and it's pointless, I say to you, good luck with breathing if you get it. Fools I say, fools. What else? Oh and also my cat is a dick too. He didn't even come up to see me in bed, no. He stayed downstairs, with my wife, watching The Sinner on Netflix. That's friendship for you. To be honest, I really can't be asked with today. Can I please have a do-over on the day? No. The whole week. The COVID Diaries. Part 2. This is my story of my experience getting COVID-19. So I am writing this daily diary, which hopefully, turns out to be light-hearted. Back to the story. Wednesday. I won't lie to you wonderful people, I am writing this diary entry on Thursday. Wednesday, was just the worst day. I did not know whether I was coming or going. The whole day was like a dream. A bad dream. The kind of dream, that if it was a real day, you would just say, hold up, fuck this. I'm out of here. Tuesday night, I slept okay, not the best, but not the worst either. But then, at around 9 p.m., it started. The chest had been invaded, and felt like it was losing the bloody battle. The coughing started. And the chest pain was not something that I signed up for. Wednesday. Backstory time. Now, I suffer from irritable bowel syndrome, and have for years, but we have had it under control recently, with no major flare-ups, that was, until that night. I thought that I was going to fly away. The thing I had really been dreading had happened, I was full of gas. 
the stomach cramps were so intense, I was almost in tears. There was no chance I was getting any sleep, the couch and the downstairs toilet became my best friend lol. Time to count the bog rolls. I can laugh now, but as I said earlier, from Sunday night. The floodgates had already buckled under some less major pressure, so, you can imagine the state I'm in at this point, it's not the best. The river of blood, was like a satanic sacrifice in my toilet. I hope you're not listening to this while you're eating. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Oh yes, we watched Frozen 2. The fucking feel-good afternoon matinees, are most certainly here. Thursday. I managed to fall asleep for an hour or two in the morning, but once again, that's when the fun started. I spent the rest of the day. As I remember it, lying on the couch in a fucking daze. Am I hot, am I cold? I lay there, sweating one minute, freezing the next. My feet felt like blocks of ice and along with this headache, and the coughing, I felt really low. Staring out of the window, I really wanted to leave the house and go to work, so I could bring some money in. I'm self-employed, so no work, no money, and Mr. Johnson and his cronies, are not going to bail me out, not when I actually need it. Anyway, for the newly named, afternoon matinee. We watched yet another Disney movie. Tinkerbell. Again. Who knew they made that many of these films? I sure fucking didn't. Friday. Well, I managed to sleep better, although, my nose was still full and my headache was still being a pulsating bell end, but, I actually feel moderately more human. That's not to say I'm fixed, I just feel less like one of George A. Romero's creations, more human, less zombie. You're probably wondering why I have used a computer's voice and not mine, to tell you my story, apart from the fact it's quite amusing. It is purely because, of a new thing which has happened. While trying to talk on the phone, I found I had to stop speaking, to catch my breath, with my chest being tight, and my head still being filled with four tons of batshit. Means apparently I can no longer keep a flowing, conversation going, without, stopping, to, catch, my, breath. This is bullshit. The afternoon matinee is upon us. I got in there first today. As I knew, there were still four fucking Tinkerbell movies we hadn't watched yet. And it wasn't happening to fucking day. My choice was a Netflix movie. Home Team, a true story of an American football coach. Finally. Well, it's time to hit the hay. I'm rattling like a walking pharmacy. I hope I get a good night's sleep. I bastard doubt it. Thanks for listening. See you in part 3.
one. Hi and welcome to our light-hearted views on this weird and wonderful world we live in. We aren't here to offend or put down anyone's beliefs or points of view. Our podcast is just for your amusement and enjoyment. This is I'm just saying Ghosts Are they real, or is it bullshit? If you troll around the likes of YouTube, it won't be long until you stumble across a video of someone who claims to have captured evidence of Auntie Barbara or Uncle Bob, who died in a tragic death, opening their kitchen cupboards or peeping round corners or spectacular displays of orbs, floating around their living rooms. Did you know? You too can make these orbs in your home. To do this, you will need one dimly lit room. Be a scruffy bastard and don't clean or dust. One shit camera. An audience with low expectations. While filming, make sure to overreact. You usually find these types on failing YouTube accounts where traffic is slowing down, and they know it takes someone like Nuke's Top 5 to feature this video on their account to kickstart theirs again. We know this from watching these types of compilation videos ourselves and falling down this rabbit hole. We are not saying it isn't real. We just think it seems a little bit iffy. It seems like everyone today has a ghostly encounter to share including me. 15 years ago, I stayed over at my dad's. I was sitting on the couch watching TV. The mirror on the wall behind the TV began to vibrate and bounce. I instantly assumed, my mate next door was getting busy, as it was the wall to his bedroom. But then, a shadow appeared from behind the mirror and moved slowly behind the TV and across the room brushing against the curtains causing them to move, this resulted in me, shitting myself and rapidly jumping out the chair, out the house and slamming the door behind me. Personally, I think this is the correct way to handle a situation like this. I then went to the safest place I knew the pub. There I sat. I got drunk and went over my experience with anyone who would listen. Once I was drunk enough not to care if anything jumped out at me. I returned to my dad's and had a pretty great night's sleep. During my experience, I did not once think, shit. I need to get my phone out. My only thought was run. Unlike me, there are people who don't shit themselves and who have their phones out and ready to catch their experience. Some people even get together and sit in circles, holding hands, asking for them on the other side, to show themselves, move something and there's usually one crazy bastard, who goes, use my body and speak through me, that's the one, you really don't want to be sat next to. If that doesn't work, they pull out a Ouija board and all sit with their fingers on a glass, basically ringing the other side and inviting them over to hang out. Some people get a lot of comfort from feeling that their past loved ones are with them. Standing at the bottom of the bed, watching them as they sleep or lingering in the hallway while they sit on the toilet having a shit. There are many TV shows where teams go out and investigate supposedly haunted locations using high-tech ghost hunting equipment to find evidence of ghosts lurking in the dark that seem to be portrayed as mostly evil and out to do the living harm. What on earth happened to lovely Auntie Barbara or chilled out Uncle Bob that has now caused them to want to swallow your soul? They are great entertainment and we are totally hooked and absolutely love these shows. But because they are for entertainment, we don't get to really see the whole picture of what really happens and so we can't take it all as real. Which means, the choice is up to you, do you believe in ghosts or is it bullshit? We aren't here to put anyone's beliefs down, so if you have ghosts with you and you get peace from that, good for you. And if you are a person who likes a chat with them, good for you too. As for me, after my encounter, I do believe and I would still run as fast as I could. We hope you have enjoyed listening to part one of our podcast mini-series, stay tuned for part two, next week. I'm just saying, why does everything have to be positive?
This is news. That plays you nothing but the best music. You're listening to Unregistered Internet Radio. You reckon? Hey, hey! Welcome to the Unregistered Internet Radio podcast. This is the second one of 2022. I hope everyone is doing absolutely fantastic. And had a great start to the year so far. No, we're all a bit skint. But anyway, today I'd like to start with some news on Ozzy Osbourne with his jump into cryptocurrency. What? Cryptocurrency? What? <laughs> oh my god, when I heard this I was like, huh? Really? <laughs> okay, okay. This I absolutely must see. So I did. And <laughs> it turned out to be true. I was, as I am now, shocked. The Osman has designed 9,666 unique bats that are called crypto bats. It seems to be a nod back to the incident in 1982 when the Prince of Darkness bit the head off a bat live on stage. That's a live bat, if you didn't know. <laughs> Uh, an accidental move which has helped to make the rock icon a household name along with other antics, but we are not going to go there. <laughs> they speak for themselves. Uh, these NFTs or non-fungible tokens have been specially designed. Yeah. Osborne's CryptoBats NFT website shows that the NFTs offer something similar to the Bored Ape Yacht Club's uh, ability to transform into mutant apes. Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> Crypto bats can transform into mutant bats, which allows owners to get special NFT in addition to the original after it's bit. <laughs> There's also ancient bats, which give Crypto Bat owners an exclusive ability to access life changing treasure hunt quotes. I mean, that's cool, right? <laughs> I'm absolutely intrigued to uh, see what a life-changing treasure hunt looks like. <laughs> uh, apparently, according to the Rolling Stone article, uh, Ozzy's quoted as saying, I've been trying to get on in on the NFT action for a while. So when I was asked in Sharon for a bored ape for Christmas, after several failed attempts of buying my own, she said no. So I decided to create my own. <laughs> He's got it saying, Crypto Bats is a fucking mental project for NFT collectors and fans. The design pays tribute to one of my most iconic onstage moments and is a chance to acquire a rare piece of art history. I love it. <laughs> I would love to have seen that interview. Well... I wonder if you're having the same thought as me. Does Ozzy even really understand the whole cryptocurrency thing? <laughs> well, I know a lot of people, and people in the 50s, and people in the 20s and 30s, who have cash. You know, a fair bit of cash to invest in such. But they still have no idea really what these NFTs really are. I, personally, am on the Bitcoin mining train, which many people think is a crazy <laughs> uh, train to be on. <laughs> Sorry. But mining at my speed costs nothing, so I'm playing the long game. And hopefully by the time I get to have a decent amount of them, well, a one, <laughs> it'll still be worth something. We know how these uh, crypto markets and things go. It's up and down, and in five years' time, probably might not even exist. Who knows? I hope they do, because 
<laughs> Ka-ching! Anyway, on a side note, if you want to get into mining uh, cryptocurrency, uh, Bitcoin, especially, uh, and this is no way a sponsored thing I'm doing, but it's worth a look if you're thinking about it. There's a free app called uh, Crypto Tab Lite. It is completely free, and you can find out how to use it on YouTube. There's like a fair few videos on there. That's how I figured it out. And even there, uh, you know, you need a wallet to put the things in to withdraw it. It's, it can be complicated, but if you, you got the patience, you got the time. Have a go. You know, if you if you have patience, that is, uh, and you're not open to be an instant millionaire, go and have a look. It's free to download. I'm uh, I'm pretty sure everywhere. Anywho. Moving on, still more Aussie news. I don't know if you're uh, into the paranormal, but if you are, then the Osborne crew are back on telly too. Yep, uh, Aussie Sharon and Jack do a show which you can see on Discovery Plus. Uh, all the episodes are on there. It's called The Osborns Want to Believe, and. It's uh, it's different. <laughs> it's where uh, Jack shows paranormal videos to his mum and dad in a bid to get them believing in the paranormal. You know, like spirits and UFOs and that. But I'll tell you what, if nothing else, it's worth a watch just to see Ozzy completely bored out of his mind when, Oz, uh, when Jack sorry, starts babbling on technical jargon, which he has got no interest in. You were that uh, Jack Osborne's a paranormal investigator in his own right. With his own show and such. <laughs> but the man, when he starts riffing him off, he just cannot be asked, And it just shows, he's just like, come on, move on, play the fucking video. <sighs> That's not the best, best one. That's not my, no, not a good impression. <laughs> but it's well worth a watch. Anyway, <laughs> I'll say that that's uh, quite enough for today. I've taken quite enough of your time. So, remember, if you have any news or anything you think we need to look into, you can get in touch with us through email. Just put news in the subject line ding on your email and email us at unregistered.inra at gmail.com and if you type in unregistered internet radio on your browser you can find the website facebook instagram all that good stuff you know all that stuff that i someone else does for me because i don't know how to do it well i do but I don't. Uh, you can check out our website for updates on anything. Uh, we have up-to-date news, gigs, competitions, and that's through uh, musicnews.com. Just click the tabs on the top of the page. I am pretty sure. <coughs> that was rank. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can figure it out. If I can, you can. Anyway. I'm Ricky B with Unregistered Internet Radio Podcasts. Stay safe out there. And wear a mask. If you don't, we'll come and pull your hair. And make you watch me a cat adverts. Have a great week.
This has been an unregistered internet radio podcast. Thanks for listening, guys. See you next week. Peace! Music. You're listening to Unregistered Internet Radio.